Hey you. Yeah. You. You didn't stumble here by chance. So let's talk. My name is Tyann, but a lot of people call me Taj. And I'm most known for my loud New York personality. Brooklyn, to be specific. And my unfiltered opinions. And most recently, for being your favorite homegirl. Yeah, cause I'm a realtor too. Don't forget that. And the Melanated Mindset is a safe space for unpopular opinions and heated debates amongst the diverse melting pot of those of us that identify as a melanated millennial. Now, I can't speak for y'all, but after seeing what being an adult is really about, nah, I got some things to say. And I know y'all do too. So let's talk about it, because what's really going on? What is up, y'all? Welcome if you're new, welcome back if you're not, to the Melanated Mindset. Yeah, hmm. we are back up in this thing for another Melanated Monday, or honestly, whatever day that you chop it up with me on. But if it's Monday, I feel you. Y'all, I got some things to say. But we gonna flow this episode like we normally do. If you are listening to the audio version, I love that. But you need to at some point pull up on me on YouTube because I got some updates for you. And if you are watching the video version of this, one, if you're wondering, Taj, why your wine look like that, that's because it's not wine tonight. Tonight, we got some kombucha, but in a wine glass because... I deserve and the girls that get it get it a cup or glass in this case of kombucha before bed will have the belly on flat flat in the morning and then in the morning on an empty stomach you drink some hot key lime water don't say I never gave y'all nothing all right because low key I just gave y'all the recipe but number two if you watching the video version of this you could already see new style who's this, okay? Y'all, your girl got her first retwist after locking. I got my retwist almost a week ago, low key. But yeah, I was five weeks since starting my locks when I got my retwist. And y'all, come on. How how we like in the updo? If you're listening to the audio version, pull up on YouTube and make sure you leave me a comment on today's video to let me know how you feeling the new look. Instead of down, we went up and I low-key am loving it. I might redo this style. That's how much I'm feeling it. Shout out to y'all if you follow me on Instagram because I put up a poll because I couldn't decide and y'all helped me. So shout out to y'all. Uh, another update, if your girl is looking like a glazed donut and mad refreshed, that's because just got out the shower, just exfoliated. Y'all know, if y'all catching me here, chances are Malik is at work. And I just put the kid to bed and your girl is just feeling really fresh. I did get a break from motherhood, low key two weekends back to back. So your girl is feeling revamped. I know to y'all, I haven't missed a beat. But it has actually been a three weeks since I recorded last week's episode for y'all. So the episode with me and Malik, yeah, it's been three weeks since I filmed the episode because y'all know I batch record. So I might be a little rusty today, but bear with me, right? Another update I have for y'all is that your girl officially started at therapy. I talked about it earlier in the season that I was going to enroll and your girl did follow through. I'm a woman of my word. If you don't know, now you know. I have actually had two sessions so far and chow. Mm. If you're not in therapy, please, please do so. The way that it has helped me already in just two sessions is crazy y'all are gonna hear me reference that a couple more times throughout today's episode but we gonna get there and don't worry yes I am planning on doing a whole episode about my therapy journey today is just their therapy changed my life like I I look at myself differently I look at everyone around me differently and I just find myself like just thinking about things a lot deeper than I used to versus just 
surface level thinking. And that's kind of what triggered today's episode along with some other things. But don't worry, I'm gonna do a whole podcast episode about my therapy journey and the things that I'm learning. So hopefully it could be helpful to you guys. And if you're not in therapy, hopefully your girl could become a a pretty credible resource. I'm not a therapist, disclaimer, but I'm going to drop the gems and y'all know this. Next, I just want to really quickly give you guys a really quick thank you to whoever is listening and whoever is watching this. Y'all, if it's one thing y'all going to do is make me feel good, okay? I feel really good about the tribe that I'm building, the online community that I am building. I feel like it's a very positive space. It's a very nurturing space, a loving space, a caring space. And I just want to tell y'all, thank you for just thugging it out on all these different journeys with me thus far, like season four of the podcast. A lot of y'all I may have went to school with, or y'all know me from Italy or from Hawaii or wherever. And if you show up every Monday, even if you don't comment or nothing and you just listen because the numbers of the people that listen do not be matching the numbers of the people that comment. No pressure, you know, try, but... We're going to have to step them analytics up. But anyway, I see y'all nonetheless, and I really do appreciate each and every one of y'all. I don't just be saying that. I really do mean that, for real, for real. All right, so let's, let's slowly start getting into the, thing, into the thick of things. I've been chatting, rambling. I told y'all, it's been three weeks since I filmed the episode, so just bear with me. I'm going to try to have y'all in and out, but I, I, got, some, I got some things to say this week. All right. First, we're going to start with, like y'all know, I've been starting kind of with a definition. So before I give y'all the Webster's definition, I want to give y'all what my personal definition of the word freedom is because yeah, y'all see what I titled this episode, freedom ain't free. And that's on period because it's really not. And I'm really going to teach y'all a thing or two this episode. But when it comes to freedom, I think that freedom is just you being free to do what you want, when you want. Simple as that, low key. But the textbook definition of freedom is the power or right to act, speak, or think as one wants without hindrance or restraint. So I ain't too far off. But talk to me, tribe. What is your definition of freedom? And yes, I'm going to tell you, pull up to the YouTube video and drop it in the comments. Because y'all love me and I love y'all too. And y'all know me, I'm never going to miss an opportunity for a shameless plug, all right? It's a staple part of the episode now. Just kind of get used to it. If you are an OG part of the tribe, or if you're new here and you would like to be, because I would love to have you, make sure that you keep up with me on all things social and kind of follow me in real quote unquote time to kind of just see what I'd be up to in between things and behind the scenes. Make sure you follow me on Instagram at Tyann.Watson and make sure you follow me on Twitter, TikTok, and YouTube at Tyann Watson with no dot in between. You heard me? Now, y'all know the vibes by now. Ain't nothing changed. Let's get into our, or better yet, my complaint of the week and highlight of the week. Speaking of which, if y'all ever have complaint or highlights of the week, feel free to drop it in the YouTube comments or on the Instagram page, wherever. It's Monday. I cannot be the only one that got something to complain about. So I want to start hearing y'all complaints and y'all highlights. Like, let's tap in with each other in real time, so to speak. But my complaint of the week this week is going to, I'm going to keep it all the way funky with y'all like I always do. It has been a really rough mental health week, like for real, for real. And I talked about, you know, going to therapy and how great it has been. But what I'm not going to do is sit up here and act like therapy is all peaches and cream and rainbows and, and that healing is this beautiful, peaceful thing. It's beautiful, but it ain't always peaceful. Part of my therapy journey so far, like I said, has been me just shifting my mindset and the way that I look at myself and the way that I look at others. 
And that's always not going to be necessarily in a positive light. That doesn't mean I'm looking at people in situations negatively. It's just I the rose-colored glasses have been taken off. And I'm starting to see a lot of things, a lot of people, a lot of situations for what they really are versus what I want them to be. And that's really an ugly place. And it's low-key a dark place to be in mentally because some days I feel like I'm doing great, everything is great. Other days I have one conversation with one person, regardless of who that may be, and they'll say something that triggers me. And then using the tools that I've learned in therapy, I'm realizing when I'm triggered, what triggered me, and how to make sure it doesn't happen again, or how to set this boundary with this person to make sure it doesn't happen again. And that's, it's a mental marathon, for real, for real, on top of just everyday living and everyday life and everything else that's going on. So it's it has been a lot. Therapy has been a lot for me to digest, but I'm taking it in small pieces, one day at a time, one step at a time. But this week was rough, y'all, for real, for real. But on a brighter note, my highlight of the week is that I've been along with kind of those dark days and that dark inner soul searching that therapy has made me do. It has also brought me to the present moment a lot more. So I have literally just been living in the moment a lot more in those moments where I find myself super stressed or super anxious or just overwhelmed and overstimulated. I am honestly finding the strength because that's what it takes to just say, yo, I'm at my max and it's okay if I do absolutely nothing but lay on my couch for the rest of the day. It's okay to mentally tap out, even if it's 11 a.m., 12 p.m., 3 p.m. You know what? Tomorrow is another day, and this problem, if it's still here tomorrow, I'll deal with it then. And I've just been bringing myself back to the present moment. I feel like me personally, and I know a lot of people can relate to this, we're kind of living in the past and in the future, but never really in the present. So I'm either stressing about stuff that has happened or stressing about stuff that may happen or is about to happen and never really just putting a pause on both the past and the present and just worrying about right now. So I definitely think that therapy in doing a lot of that soul searching has brought me into the present moment a lot more in these last few weeks. And for reference, if anybody cares, if anybody is looking for a therapist, I've said it before, I'm going to say it again. I found my therapist on therapyforblackgirls.com. You do not have to be a black girl to get on this website, but if you are a melanated girl or woman and you're thinking about getting therapy, not sure if your insurance covers it, it's free to go on the website, it's free to search, you put in your zip code, you filter it by your insurance and just see if there are any black therapists in your area that accept your insurance so that you can start your healing journey. But again, not sponsored yet, but just sharing a resource with anybody who might need it. All right, y'all, moving right along and flowing into the Fendi fact of the day because I needed to come with facts today because I keep telling y'all I got some things to say, but before I could just rush into it, we going to do this right. Today's Fendi fact comes from Pew Research Center. It is a report from November of 2011, and I want to stress that this article is from 2011 and is still very much relevant today in 2023. And the article is titled, The Military-Civilian Gap, Fewer Family Connections. And I'm going to just kind of skip all over it. If you are listening to the audio version and you're ever curious or interested in reading some of the Fendi Fact articles for yourself, I always link them in the description box of the YouTube video. So I said it once, I'm going to say it again. If you're an audio listener, you know where to find me. All right. So the article reads, a smaller share of Americans currently serve in the U.S. Armed Forces than at any time since the peacetime era between World Wars I and II. 
During the past decade, as the military has been engaged in the longest period of sustained conflict in the nation's history, just one half of 1% of American adults has served in has served on active duty at any given time. As the size of the military shrinks, the connections between military personnel and the broader civilian population appear to be growing more distant. Skipping to a, another part of the article, it reads, do family connections matter? The survey shows, and there's like graphs and everything, it says the survey shows that Americans who have family connections to the military have different views from those who don't on a range of topics related to patriotism, the military, and national security. However, there are no significant differences between the two groups in their views on the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan. All right, so before I jump into the flow of things, I just want to pop in and let you guys know if you want to join the conversation in real time and insert your own thoughts and opinions, make sure, like I keep saying, you pull up on me on YouTube, you give this video a big thumbs up so the algorithm can let you know when next week's video goes live. Make sure you leave me a comment on your complaint of the week, your highlight of the week, your thoughts and opinions on the Fendi facts. It doesn't matter if it's just words of encouragement. Some days your girl could really use it. And most importantly, make sure that you subscribe, all right? Because the tribe, we deep out here and we going we, we gonna to get deeper. You feel me? All right, y'all. So we officially flowing and your girl has been itching. First things first, let me take a sip of my kombucha because... Who I got a lot to say. All right, so first, let's refer back to the definition of freedom. The textbook definition reads, freedom is the power or right to act, speak, or think as one wants without hindrance or restraint. Now, let me bring y'all to how we got here. Let me just let it be known. Today is one of them impromptu episodes where something happened that triggered me to be like, nah, I got some things to say. So let me give y'all a little bit of backstory. This episode was triggered because today, aka earlier today, I missed an important work meeting. So it's currently like 11 o'clock at night, 6.30 earlier this evening, I was supposed to be at a work meeting, right? However, I could not go because like I said earlier in the episode, Malik is at work and if you a true tribe member, you know, recently if Malik has to go to work, that means he's working for 24 hours. Of course, just my luck, this mandatory work meeting was scheduled on a day that Malik has to go to work. And if you are a OG tribe member or at least have been here since last season, you would know that before we left Italy, unfortunately, we totaled our car. So when we got to the States, we didn't even have a car. Then obviously we got one. So we have been a one car household for a little over a year now. I'm an entrepreneur. I work for myself. So that hasn't really been that big of a deal. Normally we cannot share a car. We tried it years ago. It didn't work. And we normally always end up having to go get our own cars. If you guys have been keeping up with the economy, when we first got here, y'all would know if you've been listening to the episodes that we were under contract to buy our home. And y'all know, if you don't know, actually, your girl is a licensed realtor here in the state of South Carolina. I currently service the Columbia and Fort Jackson area. So if you, yeah, you, or anybody that you know are looking to buy, sell, or invest in real estate, I am literally and figuratively your home girl. Even if you don't live in the state of South Carolina or in Columbia, you can still reach out to me. I can still help you get started in your home journey. If need be, I can refer you to a trusted realtor in your area. But knowing what I know as a realtor, and if you didn't know, here goes a gem, do not, and I repeat, do not go and finance a car before you go buy a house because it will increase your debt to income ratio, obviously, because you're going to have a loan for that car unless you're bowling like that and you could pay it out cash. 
after being on the contract for a house, we wasn't balling like that. So we needed to finance a car. That is another reason why totaling our car was so devastating because we totaled it literally a few months before closing and we knew we could not go out and finance a car while we were under contract. While you are under contract for a home, you cannot have any major things pull your credit. Don't rack up no credit card bills. Don't finance no furniture for that house. Don't finance no car. Anything that involves your social security number, do not do it until 30 days, maybe even 60 days to be safe after you have closed on your home. So we had to wait till we closed. So we were literally paying hundreds of dollars for rentals until closing. Then after we closed, 30 days later, we went, financed our car, right? And then if you guys have been paying attention to the economy, I don't know if any of y'all have tried to go and buy a car or get a used car or any type of car. Y'all, they is asking for everything besides your firstborn for, for used cars. Used cars right now cost more than brand new cars. And like, it just wasn't a financially smart decision to go out and finance another car. So we just been surviving off of one car. That said, if Malik is at work for 24 hours, that means Malik has the car. You guys also know we homeschool our toddler, which means I am home getting my work done and mommying and homeschooling, and that's normally how his work day goes. But this work meeting was scheduled on his work day. So what that means is that I would have had to wake the baby up out of his sleep this morning to be able to drop Malik to work to then be able to have the car, which normally wouldn't be a problem, but he got a whole bunch of things going on at work that he's not in one place. So I would have had to come back, take him to the another. It just would have been too much. And I was willing to do that because this was a mandatory meeting. And then last night, I was speaking with someone at my brokerage and I got the impression that, wait a minute, this is not just like a, a like regular meeting, which I thought it was because I was going to have to bring Zabi with me because obviously he can't go to work with Malik. He doesn't have that type of job, right? And I reached out to make sure that that was okay. I was told it was okay. And then as I'm going through my email and looking at the flyer for this meeting, I'm like, yo, this look like a fancy flyer. Yo, this meeting is at a convention center. Hold up. Let me find out how, just how formal is this meeting because I'm getting the vibe that it's way too formal for me to be bringing my two-year-old. Mind you, this meeting was at 6.30 p.m. and I'm like, that's already going to throw his nighttime schedule off, but for the sake of work, that's fine. So I reached out to my broker in charge and found out this was in fact way more formal than I was under the impression. So then I had to make the decision like, is it even worth doing all of this to bring my son to this meeting and then you know I was told pretty much like it's cool if you bring him but you know if he gets restless you know just kindly step out which is cool but he's too you understand and if you have been around kids or have kids how long y'all think I'm about to be able to keep a two-year-old still and quiet during like a formal meeting Exactly. So that would in turn resulted in me being frustrated and stressed and probably taking that out of my child, obviously not in like a physical or abusive type of way, but you know, I just would have been more frustrated with him because I'm trying to work and he may have been a distraction and I just know my child and it was unfair of me to put those unrealistic expectations on him to be still and quiet for an hour or two when he don't even do that at home. So it just didn't seem like the time or place for me to have him. But unfortunately, y'all know we live in this state where we don't have any friends or family for real, for real. Nobody that can just come and watch him that I trust. So it's just like, there's nothing I could do. I just can't go. You understand? So I expressed that. And, you know, my broker, he he was very understanding. But, you know, he made a comment that um it didn't. It didn't rub me the wrong way. He pretty much made a comment saying like, you know, well, this meeting has been scheduled for a month and it just left me feeling away. And in that moment, I was like, you know what? I, I understand, you know, I apologize for the inconvenience, but you know, that's just how the cookie crumbles in my head. I'm like, I'm not willing to stress myself out mentally and then be fighting with my son physically trying to keep him in a seat and still and then got to figure out what I'm gonna feed him after this because now dinner time is off and then bedtime is off and like 
Malik doesn't get off of work until in the morning. So I'm the one that's stuck with this. And I've already had a day because I would have had to wake him up early. Like you get what I'm saying? It would have just been an entire day to end in stress and learning what I've learned in therapy. I have learned that I got to know when it's just too much. And that would have been too much for me to handle. Right. And thanks to therapy after what I know now, after sitting back and digesting the situation and the conversation with my broker, I learned within myself that what I was feeling in that moment was frustration. And it wasn't frustration with my broker personally at all. It was just frustration with the fact that like, wow, civilians really don't get it. And it's just like, do you think the army give a damn how long my real estate work meeting has been scheduled? It could have been, could have been scheduled a year out. They ain't going to let my husband come home so I could go to work. Like it just ain't happening like that for real, for real. And it's like, yo, I know people who have missed the birth of their children, their firstborn children. If the army don't give a damn about that, what the hell make you think the army give a damn that my husband and wife got a work meeting to go to and they don't got no babysitter? You understand? And I was frustrated because the, all of those things came to my mind. But then I had to realize like, you know what? I had to step out of my frustration and realize, yo, Ty, they don't know what they don't know. And when I use the term they throughout this episode, I'm referring to civilians. Specifically, I'm dividing military personnel and their families and civilians into separate categories. Civilians meaning anybody that ain't military affiliated. And once I stepped out of my frustration, I had to realize, nah, I'm going to use my platform for what I intended to use my platform for, which was to educate. So if they, civilians, don't know what they don't know, it's my job as someone who's a military affiliated to educate and inform because the misinformation and the, the not arrogance, the ignorance, but not ignorance in a civilians don't want to know. It's just that a lot of y'all, because I know a lot of y'all listening may not be military affiliated, so that will make you a civilian. You just don't know. So instead of me getting frustrated anytime a civilian can't empathize with me, you know what? I am going to dedicate an entire episode to educating because the misinformation and the miseducation about the military and how it works is so tiring and taxing on those of us that are in this world because y'all have no idea just how tiring and stressful it can be. Any other job, my husband might have been able to bring his son to work just for an hour or two or have been able to maybe get a shift switched with someone just to come in an hour. You know, like the military do not work like that. They said what they said and what they said is what they said. Do with that information what you will. So like to hear my broker in charge say like, hey, well, you know, that's why we put this information out a month ago so that everybody could have this taken care of. It's like, I, the, they could have changed my husband's schedule the day before and there's nothing I could do about it. There's nothing you could do about it. So I can do all the planning I want. It's the army and the military that isn't you, you understand like they're the ones that aren't on a good schedule that everything is discombobulated and they're the ones that unfortunately are pulling the strings in my life and in my husband's life because what they say go when they say jump he has to ask how high like that is how this works and I don't really think a lot of people understand that at its core for real for real so that brings me to tying in the Fendi fact, which was the disconnect between the military and civilians. Let me preface this by saying, if you're new here and don't know, and you're like, well, damn girl, like what makes your opinion so valuable or valid? My husband has been in the military, the army specifically for 10 years now. 
which means I have been affiliated with the army, aka the military in some way, shape or form for 10 years now, a full decade. So I think I got some say in this conversation. If anybody was going to question the validity, the validity, the validity, validity, if y'all was going to say my opinion wasn't valid. So when it comes to the disconnect between the military and civilians, understand that the military personnel, we understand that it's of no fault of your own. You're not specifically saying you're you listening or you watching, but remember I'm speaking about civilians, right? So it's no fault of their own that they don't know what they don't know. If you are not privy to this world, you have no idea how it runs. Kind of like if you don't got nobody that you know that work at the Pentagon, we don't know what the hell we going on in there. We hear what they tell us in the news, but we don't know what the hell go on in that building, pretty much. That's a whole nother world. The military literally is its oh, it's a world in and of itself, honestly. The main thing that really I don't think a lot of civilians grasp and that causes that disconnect between military personnel and civilians are the sacrifices. And I'm not talking about the ultimate sacrifice. And if you're unfamiliar with that term, ultimate sacrifice is used when we're talking about a soldier or an airman or just a service member. For anybody who's not military affiliated at all, every single person in the military is not a soldier. Soldier is a specific term specifically just for the army. Just like if you're in the Marines, then you're a Marine. If you're in the Air Force, you're an airman. But all of the military people together, they're just called service members. So from this point forward, I'm just going to refer to them as service members. But that can go for any branch of the military. So... The ultimate sacrifice means that a service member has given their life for this country, America, spelled with the case. And when I say that, uh, that means that a service member has died in the line of duty, whether that be on foreign soils, on U.S. soils. The service member was active duty currently on a contract and somehow, unfortunately, gave the ultimate sacrifice. When you are a soldier, that is what it's called. When you give your life for this country, it's the ultimate sacrifice. And a lot of people think like, yep, that's what you sacrifice. There's a possibility you could lose your life, right? But let's talk about the not so extreme sacrifices that have just as hard as an effect on other military personnel. Because we get that. The ultimate sacrifice, it makes sense, 100%. We can put a pin in that, right? But the other sacrifices that nobody talks about are time, our resources, our opportunities, or jobs. Like, I, I feel like a lot of people, again, civilians, they know this these things, but they've never had someone really break it down for them. You understand, you see the videos on social media of the soldiers, excuse me, the service members sleeping in the airport because they're trying to get home or, you know, on FaceTime in the airport because their spouse is in labor or you, you have, you've seen the videos, right? So you get that, oh, these people are sacrificing time with their families, but understand that Every single one of them, not just the ones you see in these videos, are sacrificing time with their families, time for themselves. There was a time when Malik first got in where he was so miserable because he was working from 2, 3 a.m. in the morning to 4, 5 p.m. and then would get home and then still has to be in shape because that's a part of his job, so still has to work out. And then somehow was supposed to find time for me. But all I got was the man with the shitty attitude at the end of the night because he's exhausted and I'm pretty much nagging him about why he can't stay up for episode of 90210. Like, it's this detrimental cycle. Like, to be a service member is to give up your time. And that's, I don't think people understand how valuable that is. We hear the saying, time is money. 
So what does that say for the men and women that give up so much of it and don't get paid enough money? Sips kombucha. Let's talk about resources, right? A lot of people like to say that, you know, oh, you guys have free healthcare and free this and free that. It ain't free. Y'all pay for it. You listening, you watching, y'all pay for it. The actual service members not paying for it, but somebody paying for it. Like it, it, it's not free. And if you live in this country, America, with the K's, and you think anything is free, you gonna have to take your head up out them clouds. Just like the street you drive on, they free for you to drive on. But guess what? Somebody pay for them. Probably you with them tax dollars. You get what I'm saying? And then as far as opportunities and jobs, look at me. I I could have networked with anybody at that meeting tonight, but because of the military and how my husband's schedule work, I mean, granted, us having one car, you know, has something to do with that. But had he not been working a 24-hour shift, then... You know, like we probably could have still made the one car thing work. So there are so many things that not even just the service member, because a lot of people think that just the service member is the one doing the sacrificing. The families of those service members, nobody talks enough about, and that pisses me off. Nobody talks about how much we sacrifice. The wives, the husbands, because yes, there are women in the the service who husbands are army husbands or air husbands, whatever you want to call them. So the men and women that are the support system for these service members, it takes so much mentally to be the service member. But can we take a second to think about how much mental strength it takes to support said service member when you yourself don't know what they dealing with or going through every day. Let's let's really let's talk about it if we're gonna talk about it. Because if we're talking about the ultimate sacrifice, I get that. The ultimate sacrifice is life. But those of us at home taking care of the home front while the men and women go out and take care of the country, we sacrificing a lot too. People like to joke about the divorce rate being so high in the military. Yeah, that's because a lot of people can't handle this type of heat, can't handle this type of pressure. Me and Malik talk about it all the time. A lot of those relationships don't work out because they start after the military. We're fortunate enough to have known each other before he was even in the military. And that's probably, honestly, if I'm keeping it a stat, the only reason that our relationship has been able to sustain the military is because... I know him before the military. He knows me before the military. So a lot of people like to pretend like, oh, they get in the military, they start making quote unquote money because baby is fucking pennies. I'd be trying not to curse, but it's pennies. And they be acting like they the shit back at home and they swimming in bread. They not. They are not. They're not. Okay. The very first year that Malik came home from deployment and I filed our taxes, I realized, holy shit, we are living below the poverty line. Like, I literally Googled the poverty line. And we he had made less than that for the year. So let that sink in. Somebody with a job that can cost them the ultimate sacrifice, a.k.a. their life, was being paid below the poverty line. Sips kombucha. Back on the topic of sacrificing opportunities and jobs, not even just small things like meeting. I'm talking about whole jobs. There are plenty of military spouses that I have met personally who have degrees, like still paying student loans on their degrees, and they can't get a job in their field Not because they can't, not because they have the regular, oh, I can't get a job in my field struggle like a lot of y'all do out in the civilian world, but they can't get a job in their field because they move every 24 to 36 months. So they then spent hundreds and thousands and took out loans to go to school to fall in love with this person that joins the military and they have to uproot their life every 24 to 36 months. Therefore, they don't have enough work experience 
to get the job that they want, or they're not in one place long enough to get the job that they want. I know women with master's degrees that bag groceries on base because that's the only job that they're willing to get. I know women that have gotten their dream jobs just for their spouses to come down on military orders. If you don't know what military orders are, it's a packet that says you, your family, all your shit, pack it up. You have to be here. Here could be across the country or across the world by this date and not a moment later. Make it happen. I have known women that have cried bald because they got their dream job finally put in those degrees to use and then their partner comes down on orders and guess what kiss that dream job goodbye kiss that job offer goodbye because you gotta pack your shit and move across the world and there's nothing you can do about it i know people who have kids that go to school, once they get to like their junior year of high school, then you can petition the military to be like, oh no, we need to stay for one more year so my child can finish high school. But you got a freshman in high school? Oh baby, they don't give a damn. Pack it up. You got to be somewhere. As a high schooler, imagine going from making all of your friends the end of freshman year to finally getting a grip on high school and then being told, hey baby, Daddy just came down on orders. We're moving to Korea. Yeah. Let's talk about sacrifices. Because everybody in the family makes sacrifices so that you, not you listening or you watching, but you as in civilians, remember, can sleep safely at night. Now, correct me if I'm wrong. But those sacrifices come up a lot more often than the ultimate one does but nobody talks about those right and what people like to say is oh you signed up for this negative and I'm speaking for me personally because if you are a true and through tribe member or hell if you ain't refer back to season one episode five where me and my husband tell our love story Because if you've heard that episode, you would know. I didn't even know he had enlisted in the army when we started dating. That information and news came after. So no, technically I did not sign up for this. I am not one of those women that met this man in the military, fell in love, got married, and skipped off into the sunset. Nah, this shit caught me by surprise. And if you listen to the episode, you'll understand his reason for not telling me right away. But some of us didn't sign up for this. We didn't sign up for these type of sacrifices. We didn't sign up to have to raise kids by ourselves because our spouses are constantly gone. We didn't sign up to possibly lose our spouses because they gave the ultimate sacrifice. We didn't sign up for the depression that comes with living across the world with no family or no friends. We did not sign up to be paying these student loans for a degree we can't use. A lot of us signed up for fucking love. And that's it. So telling us and these service members, when you hear us, vent or complain that, oh, that's what you signed up for. That's like saying, yo, you fell in love with this person and one day this person robs a bank, but because you love them, you signed up to do time with them if they get caught. Do you hear how crazy that sounds? Do you hear how crazy that, that's what it sounds like when people tell us, That's what you signed up for. Especially when people tell the spouses, yo, when people tell me, well, that's what you signed up for. I really want to spaz because that's not everybody's story. I didn't sign up for this. I fell in love and got sucked into this. Like he obviously didn't hold a gun to my head or nothing, but like I knew nothing about the military. I had no military experience. Nobody in my family ever been in the military. So I had no idea. Like y'all, y'all being the civilians, not, you know, the tribe personally, I didn't know what I didn't know until I was in too deep. 
like a lot of us. So that you signed up for a bullshit, really, don't ever say that to somebody in the military, please, especially the service member, because they have to be reminded that they actually did sign up for it. But that, and that's even that, like, just because somebody agreed to take a job don't mean they don't get to complain about it. And if there's anybody that gets to complain about their job, it's the men and women that are paying the ultimate sacrifice, that are literally putting boots on the ground, that are literally defending our right to sleep in these comfortable homes and beds safely at night and not be in a country like Ukraine or any of them other countries where other countries just drop in Hiroshima bombs on them. Like, you get what I'm saying? Oh, y'all. Sips kombucha because I'm getting hot. Like, y'all, this topic... mm. There is such a heavy mental burden that comes with the military that we, we being anyone military affiliated, really want civilians to be mindful of. If you don't believe me, look up the military suicide rates. And then keep in mind that those rates that you see are just the ones they want you to know about because the military covers up suicides Every goddamn day. And anybody who has been in the service can vouch for that. That is not a conspiracy theory. That's a fucking fact. Okay? I'm talking like people we have come in contact with, people that Malik has worked with. These soldiers just want to be freed from the weight. So much so that they feel like they don't want to be here anymore. So... As a civilian, understand that the job is already physically demanding, but it is more mentally demanding than anything. So when you tell a service member something like, this is what you signed up for, all you do is drag them deeper in that hole because then you remind them that they signed up for this type of mental warfare more than likely before they were ready Some of them at 18, like y'all, it still blows my mind to this day that people joining the military now in 2023 were born in the 2000s. Like y'all, y'all, y'all get that, right? Like you just have to be 18 to join the military. So that means we got 2001, 2002 babies joining the military. As a 90s baby, granted, that ain't too far off, but like. That's who's defending our country. The, 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 the 2000s babies. These are babies. A lot of them have no idea. And the military is a last resort. So they mentally already was dealing with stuff. But somebody got to do the job, right? Because a lot of y'all, not again, not y'all the tribe. Y'all is in civilians. Y'all ain't going to do it. And uh, unless y'all want them to bring the draft back, somebody got to do it. So you got these scared and lost young men and women that have nowhere else to go. Some of them just need a roof over their head and a meal and health insurance. So they join the military and they get beat the fuck down physically, mentally. They say that's what basic training is for, to literally beat you down and build you back up. Like, I can't make this shit back up. I, like, I can't sh- make this shit up. Another point that I want to bring up that I think contributes to the disconnect between military personnel and civilians is civilians have to, I, can, I, I cannot stress this enough, have to stop thinking that we got it so good and so much better than y'all out in the civilian world. I can think of two Examples that come to my mind right off the top of the head. Number one is housing. You have no idea how many times I hear, oh, you don't you don't pay for housing or you don't pay for rent or the military pays for y'all. Understand that there is a cap. There is something called BAH, basic housing allowance. BHA, sorry, basic housing allowance. Yeah. Do y'all think Uncle Sam really paying everybody rent, whatever it is, everybody's mortgage, whatever it is? No. Uncle Sam, based on the cost of living where you are, here's the cap. If your rent or your mortgage is more than that cap, you got to come out of pocket. 
but they will give you an allowance towards it. Understand also that there is a bigger game being played. Who's in office? These senators and these judges that pass these bills and et cetera, et cetera, greatly affect the amount of money we make. I'm going to keep it hella funky with y'all right now. The military gets paid more when there's a Republican president when there's a Republican president, when there is a Democratic president in office, the military takes a pay cut. I have witnessed it. I have felt it in my household, in my husband's paycheck. This is not conspiracy. This is a fucking fact, y'all. So understand that with things like that, there are so many factors that go into it Trust me when I say that shit ain't free. Because as much as I hate to admit it, we was making the most money we ever made when Trump was president. That, no, I am not a Trump supporter. I am spitting the facts. Now that there is a Democratic president, we are getting paid pennies. The military pay is always the first one on the chopping block. Would you imagine... The men and women that pay the ultimate sacrifice, their pay is the first ones to get cut. Hmm. Another example, insurance. You also don't know how many times I've heard, oh, you don't got to pay for insurance. Be glad you don't got to pay for health insurance, blah, 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 blah. Now, if you live in America with the case, you know, you get what you pay for, right? And again, like I said before, It ain't free because somebody paying for it, a.k.a. you watching and you listening. Your tax dollars pay for it. So please stop thinking that it's free. The actual person that's receiving the benefits just doesn't pay the physical money for it. You do. So it ain't free. Also, think about the things that you get that are quote unquote free. What, what, what's the quality like? Hmm? Hmm? When you get something for free versus when you pay for something, isn't there usually a really big quality difference? I am here to tell you that with our insurance, there is no difference. TRICARE, though it may be quote unquote free, you will let, let people tell it, it is literally marketed as the best insurance in the country. Literally, I've heard, I've heard veterans say it. I have seen it written in articles. That is how it is described. And y'all, it's bullshit. It's a piece of shit. And anybody that is a TRICARE prime or standard member will tell you. Case in point, therapy. So I had to go get a referral from my primary care physician saying that, you know, I want to seek a mental health specialist, aka go get therapy. It was a hassle to get that referral. Then when I got it, they sent it to the wrong place. Then I had to play this phone game and phone everybody down to get it. Just to find out when everything got situated that I only am covered for 20 sessions of therapy. The families of soldiers, mind you, if you don't know, Malik has actually been deployed. He has spent nine months in Afghanistan. So The people that have to support the service members that come home with that type of baggage are only worth 20 sessions of therapy. But we got the best insurance in the world. But something as simple as therapy is not unlimited. The one thing that anybody attached to this lifestyle needs is not readily accessible. And then the pickings are always slim. Before my loctician told me about therapy for black girls, y'all, my actual TRICARE primary care physician gave me a recommendation for a therapist. I get to call and down the list. Y'all know me, I want a black therapist. So I go on a website, I'm like, oh, this office got two or three black women. It don't even matter which one. So I call them up like, yo, I'm trying to book an appointment, blah, 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 blah. I got to care. Oh, I'm trying to get an appointment with Dr. So-and-so. Oh, well, unfortunately, Mrs. Watson, 
I regret to inform you that Dr. So-and-so, insert black doctor, or black therapist, psychiatrist, I'm not sure her exact title, doesn't accept government insurance. Okay, well, I'll take Dr. So-and-so, insert second black. Same thing, Mrs. Watson, I'm sorry. Okay, I'll take third black doctor. Yep, unfortunately, same thing. So imagine my black ass on the phone with this woman trying to book a therapy session with another black woman just to be told that these black women that work at this office that I was referred to for my insurance do not take my insurance. That was a slap in the face if I ever felt one for multiple reasons, but I'm going to save that for the therapy episode. But let people tell it, we got the best insurance in the world. I can't even go talk to somebody that looks like me without jumping through hoops. Had I not gone to lock my hair, I probably still would not have a therapist to this day. So shout out to Lavender at Lavender Locks on Instagram in Augusta, Georgia, because I owe her so much. Not just for starting my lock journey, but for finding me a therapist. And then when I went on therapy for black girls... And filtered it by insurance, y'all, only one popped up, the therapist I have now. So my options are very, very, very limited for my husband to lay down his blood, sweat, and tears for this country. But I digress. Sips kombucha. A lot of us, and when I say us, I'm talking military personnel, regardless of race, have it so much harder than it may seem. Now, when we pack on race, a lot of black military personnel have it even harder. We may smile. We may post the happy, friendly, and family content. But there are days where we are at war with ourselves and one another. And this thing that is the military that just engulfs you and controls every aspect of your life. It literally is almost like being in prison and I've never been in prison, but it's the best way that I could describe it because once you're in it, everything about your life is regarding the military. I'm not even in the military and the military has affected my career and and my job and my businesses on a daily, on a daily. You get what I'm saying? It becomes the center of your world and Unfortunately, some service members, some family members, because there are some people that leave their spouses because they just can't deal with this shit. There are some service members that unfortunately end their life because they just can't deal with this shit. It's like a, it's like a black hole that just sucks you in. And it's so hard to get out of. We have seen people get out the military and come right back in because they can't get acclimated to civilian life. Literally. Same like the people in jail. It's honestly the similar the similar the similarities are astounding. For real, for real. I know I did a lot of talking, but y'all, this is a topic that is very dear and dear to my heart. And after that conversation today, it just it really it got it got my blood boiling, and I was like, nah, I got some shit to get off my chest. But we are in our familiar place. I'm sorry if this episode is mad long. I just had a lot of things that I needed to say. But we in our familiar place. We are at our word of the week. This week's word of the week is going to be empathy. Because when service members or their families complain about the military not working in our favor, the very last thing that we want y'all, y'all not y'all, my tribe, y'all civilians, to think is, well, you signed up for this. Like, Don't tell us that, but we don't even want you to think that. That shouldn't even be a thought in your mind. Hell, most of us don't even want your sympathy because we can't do shit with that. Like, Don't feel sorry for me. This is not a, oh, woe is me thing. This is not a, I need you to feel sorry for me. I need sympathy. I need pity. Nah, what most of us truly want is empathy. Understand that this shit is hard and that everyone's life doesn't fit into the same 
cookie cutter life that yours, again, yours being civilians, does out in the civilian world. Like we want y'all to understand there's a whole world that you know nothing about. And that's for your own good so that you can sleep good at night. Because if every family had to undergo the stress that military families undergo, let me tell you, there would be a lot less families and that'd be a quick way to get a handle on population control. Because everybody's not built for this. Hell, we not even built for this. We just get up every goddamn day and do it because we don't have no choice and that man signed a contract. And if he don't fulfill it, he going to jail. (laughs) Like, that's literally all that it comes down to. So the next time that you see a service member, like whether it be out and about or you have service members in your family, don't just say thank you for your service because it's the patriotic thing to do. Mean that shit because you have no idea the things that them and or their families have given up constantly on a daily basis and sacrifice no matter how big or how small just for you to live the life that you do and besides the train in the background and it almost being midnight i think i've said all that needs to be said which was a lot i'm sorry y'all and on that note if you made it this far thank you for kicking it with me and chopping it up with me i appreciate each and every one of y'all the love and the support it never goes unnoticed or unappreciated and if you want to join the conversation in real time make sure that you're following me across all social media platforms at tyann watson but more specifically make sure you're following me on instagram at tyann.watson because that's where i'll post all of the polls all of the questions and conversation starters That's also where you guys can expect to see sneak peeks and previews into the episodes to come. We on a new season and we on a new level. This gonna be one hell of a ride. I hope y'all are ready. Until then, I'll see you, yeah you, same time, same place next week for another Melanated Monday. And remember, the goal is to be good and do good. Until next time, peace y'all.